Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad and Seb. I hope you guys are having a great day. I myself am having a fantastic day. Um, so today we're gonna be filming a video on the top things that I wish I knew about Lightroom when I first started color grading, um, and some sort of like hidden little secrets and things you can do within Lightroom. Now before I do get into this video, it'd be great if you could go check the top link in the description. You can go ahead and buy all of our presets, over 300 presets, over 75 actions, over a thousand overlays, plus a mini Photoshop course as well. That link will be the top link in the description. So go ahead and check that out. That would really support us. That'd be great if you guys were interested in that kind of stuff. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into this video and see what we can do. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you guys was, you know, if you go onto Instagram and you want to upload a photo and you can apply some of their filters. So once you've applied their filters, you'll tend to find that their filter is too strong. Um, it's not exactly what you want, but within Instagram, you can actually change the opacity of that filter. So you can have 20%, 50%, 70% or 100% of that filter on your image. Um, now currently within Lightroom, there is no built-in method of doing this. You can't actually do this. I and mean, you'll find a lot with our presets as well. Um, everybody's presets that you apply to your images, you can probably find that a lot of the time, you don't actually get the look you want. You'll either get too much of that look from the presets. So what you'll find is you may apply presets from our preset pack or from somebody else's preset packs. And what will happen is it will be too much for your image. It's not quite what you want. You can go ahead and you can download a thing called the fader. If you go ahead and type it into Google, I'm gonna try and remember to leave this link in the description if I do remember. If not, just type in the fader into Google and you should get this link here. And all it'll do is it'll bring up this window which basically allows you to choose the folder for your preset, apply that preset, and then change the opacity of that preset. It's really simple. I'll show you how you do it um, how it's done. You can read the uh, the readme file, it'll tell you exactly how to install it. It is free uh, or you can pay £10 I think for either an extended version um, or just, just support them as well. So go ahead and get this if you want. All you do is scroll down here and just download it and unzip the folder um, and you're good to go. Diving back into Lightroom, if you guys are interested, I am on the 2018 version of Lightroom at the moment here. Um, so what we're going to be doing is you're going to come up to file and click on plugin extras. Now plugin manager is what you use for when you install it. Plugin extras is what we're going to be using to use it and it's just called the fader here so you just click on the fader brings up this preset sort of window you then choose the folder and the preset so we're going to go in with our alan palander style presets today uh, we did make a video on this a couple of days ago so if you want to go watch that video that is on the channel um, so we're going to choose that preset and then after a minute or two it will actually update live on this image behind us so you can see here if I drag the slider up to 100% or 150% opacity, that is what it's going to look like on your image. Okay, so for some reason, 150% seems to apply more of what the preset should do. So you can then add more of the preset or you can remove more of the preset, which is actually really useful. Um, so what you'll find is with 100%, this may be more than what you want for your color grade, in which case all you do is you come onto here, opacity, and you just drag the opacity down and say, I want, let's say, and then you'll see it'll basically update and allow the tiny amount of that preset. Alternatively, you can go for 50%, you can have a nice sort of in-between medium of what your preset looks like on your image. Drag it up to 78% and hopefully it seems to be updating here more than it's updating down here. Not exactly sure why, but let's say you choose 78%, you then just click OK, and it then applies that preset at 78% to your image. So you can see that's what the before looked like and that's the after. Now, this is a really cool tool, especially if you're trying to create a theme and you've got yourself some really good presets, but every time you apply it, they don't always work. This is a great way of making sure you can keep that theme going without really going in and adjusting the preset itself. And then obviously from here, you can go in and you can say, well, actually I want it to be slightly more blue. I want it have less contrast etc etc um, you still have the base color grade okay so also guys it'd be really useful if you can go ahead and check out our instagrams that is the uh, they will be linked down below in the description or somewhere in the videos i'm around uh, here something like that that will be in the video so don't forget go ahead and check those out as well if you have time now this is a small thing that i wish i had known when i started uh, it just took a little bit of googling to try and find out it's nothing major but it's kind of important kind of useful if you import a photo into your lightroom library sometimes you'll find the image could be rotated where you don't want it to be rotated so you can come up to help and you can type in rotate alternatively just come up to photo and also uh, you can just scroll down to the rotate left or right if you're confused about your left or right it also tells you counterclockwise or clockwise which is uh, useful and um, so all you do is click that and it rotates it to the position you want to you may be thinking this is blindingly obvious and it's not particularly useful but i'm about to tell you something it's kind of useful if you happen to be doing editing for a long time so say for example you've edited and you know your image kind of looks like this after you you've kind of got to a certain point of editing and your mind's getting to the point where you're not exactly sure if you like the color grade or not now there's two things you can do 
One, which I tend to do, is just leave it, come back to it a couple of days later and see what you then think of it. Alternatively, you could type in flip and you could actually flip that photo horizontally. Now, what that will do is obviously it will change the look of the photo. It may actually give you a new perspective on the photo, but it's your eyes are then less used to that perspective, which kind of gives your brain like a reset on what the image is. And I tend to do this if I've spent so long trying to edit this photo and I don't even know anymore if I like it. I don't even know if it's a good look, if it's a good photo. So I'll just flip the photo, rotate it completely the opposite side flip it up completely and then you have a completely new perspective of the photo and then you might notice something you might think ah actually this looks slightly better like this this looks slightly better like this alternatively it might not do anything but I tend to find that can actually help kind of reset your mind when you're editing so guys like I mentioned uh, you can go ahead and you can purchase our whole shot preset pack that link will be down below in the description so don't forget to jump down and have a look at that as well okay so the next thing I want to talk to you about is how you choose the photos you're going to edit now I don't know about you but when I kind of go through it and I look at my photos that I've imported them from the camera onto my computer these files can be upwards of 30 40 megabytes which can take a while for the computer to actually render and load those images which ultimately can make it quite confusing to try and find your images because if you're anything like me i end up taking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photos of the same thing until i can find something i really like within that some people only take like four or five i tend to go in the bulk sort of shoot crazy method machine gun shoot method and then at the end cut through all of the rubbish and choose the one i like now basically the best thing you can do for this is you can alternatively you can sit on your computer and you can kind of go through finder or your file browser and have a look at all the images alternatively import all of the images into your lightroom library this will slow down lightroom because you will have more images in there but once you're done you can get rid of the ones you don't want and then come onto your library mode and just press the space bar and it'll then show you your images and then you just press the right button and it'll flick through those images really quickly now you can see it's flicking through these images at some rapid pace and all of these images are actually raw photos but if I had done this within uh, my file browser it would have taken an awful lot longer so all you need to do is just press and hold and you can really quickly see the photos you want to choose and you can be like yeah actually I want that one I want that one all of that saves an awful lot of time so the next tip I'm going to talk to you guys about is how you can organize your photos so say for example you have 200, 300 photos, and there's one photo in there that you like, and then after that you've got another 300, and there's another photo in there that you like, and you're, you're editing through them, but you don't really know how to sort of save them or remember where they are. Um, there's a few things you can do. I tend to create what's called a collection. So if you have a, an image selected, you can then click on that image, and you can then come down to collections, click plus, create a collection, and then just call it, I don't know, my choice. 2019 and then it'll once you I'm not going to do this because I don't want the collection but then you click create it then puts them all into a little collection together and then all you do is you then have another photo so you then come up to let's say I want to add this to a collection um, well, I think you can just drag it and drop it into a collection like that and it just dumps it in there and then when you come back to it you're like these are the 20 30 photos I want to upload to Instagram you then just click on your collection and there they are you then just select them all and export all of the photos so that's how you kind of organize those now one thing now one other thing that's really useful to do is do control click on the image or right click um, and then you can just set a color label to let's say purple for example and it'll just put a purple box around it just so it's easier to identify the ones you've already edited so that's just a quick note on organizing your photos it can be really useful to save time okay so finally I'm going to talk to you about some of the, the, the most important parts within Lightroom some of the bits that when you're first learning you don't really think about using they kind of either seem too daunting or you're not exactly sure what you can do with them so uh, the first thing we're going to do is on the new version of Lightroom you will have this thing called profiles and that's this four sort of grid here now if you click on that this is something that I didn't know was there. Um, I updated a new version of Lightroom and I've been using it for ages and I didn't even know it existed. So what that will do is it will apply a color profile to your image. Um, now it's not quite the same as a preset, but it does a very similar kind of thing. It's kind of like if you think about it, you can you take a photo on a Canon camera, and you or sorry a film camera or a camera that's not quite right uh, or old or a different camera. You can choose that camera's color profile or a color profile, for example, near that, like a film color profile, and it will apply a look to that that kind of either resets it or gives it a different style. So a good example is this one here. If I click on portrait film. If I show you the before and the after, I've, after I've applied that profile, it kind of gives it more contrast, changes the look up a bit. Um, now there are a few free ones within Lightroom, you can go ahead and download some more offline. Um, I personally just went and found a load of free ones uh, and you can just sort of download those. Um, 
but these are some of the ones you can get. And let's say you choose artistic number six, you can then increase the amounts. So you can have 200% of it, you can have about 25% of it, um, or you know however much you want. Good thing with this is again, if you're trying to create a theme, you can choose one or two color profiles which are very similar to each other. You can apply that color profile to all of your images, create a base preset, which means you click on that image, you set the preset, and the preset is just this color profile. From there, you then go ahead and adjust the uh, contrast and all of that. Create a preset, as I like to call them base presets, which creates your theme. Once you've got your theme, you then go ahead with it in that you can change like the hues, the saturations, and all of that just a little bit more. It's a really good way of creating a really cool base color grade, but the best part is once you've done that and you click close, you'll see here, none of these sliders have been changed. It doesn't affect your preset in any way. Everything is like basic stock out of the camera raw, excluding the color profile. So it's like a, an extra sort of layer on top for your uh, color grading. So that's basically it for today's video. I don't wanna go waffling on too much more about this. I was gonna talk more about the tone curve and how that's like a really useful tool. If you want more like in-depth tutorials on the tone curve or things like that, or if you want more about the color profiles, don't forget to just drop a comment down below. That'd be really useful just to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, but until then, we will see you in the next video. Live long and prosper.